Hello again, I am Blunty, and that right there is a Hubson H107C, a popular camera-equipped mini quadcopter, and I reviewed it quite recently, as the regulars around here will know, and I found it to be pretty damn sweet. And if you saw that review, you may remember I mentioned that one of the things I thought could improve it was a wider angle lens. Also, as I mentioned in that review, it's got a relatively common camera module used in lots of ultra-small camera gadgets, and that means you can actually get spare parts for it, including different lenses. So I bought one. Specifically, I bought the one called the M7 1.8mm Wide Angle Lens for Mini Camera. I got it from a popular Chinese-based site called Banggood. You've probably heard of them. They run lots of ads right here on YouTube. The lens only cost me about $5. Kind of a no-brainer to snatch it up and try to mod it on the H107C just to see what happens. And it turns out it's super easy to do. All you need is a small screwdriver and about 10 minutes of your time. So let's step you through it. Now, once you get the main body shell apart, you'll find the avionic circuitry on the top half and the camera board in the lower half. Be mindful of the camera's power wires, though. You don't want to break those away from the main circuit board. Four more screws hold in the battery cradle. Remove it to expose the camera's guts. The camera board is just held in place by small friction clips. Carefully pop it free and pull the camera sensor and lens assembly from the body. Again, be careful though, you break that short ribbon cable and you've foobarred the camera. Next up, you'll need to unscrew the stock lens. You'll need a pair of small pliers or something for this as it's held in place with a small amount of glue. So apply firm but careful pressure to break the glue then simply unscrew the lens until it falls free. Remember, lefty loosey, righty tighty, turn it counterclockwise to get it free. Now all you need to do is screw the new lens back in its place. Totally simple. But don't do it yet. The opening on the drone's case is not big enough for the front of the new larger lens. So first, very carefully remount the camera board and sensor module, being very careful not to touch the now completely exposed image sensor or get dust or any kind of crap on it at all. It's a quick way to ruin it. And once it's in place, you can then screw the lens on through the body. All you need to do now is reassemble the quad and away you go. Now, you will need to use a bit of testing and trial and error to screw and unscrew the lens to achieve proper focus. An easy way to do this is to mark the lens barrel on one side so you can have a frame of reference for how far it's been turned. Then take short clips with it in different positions, check the footage to see if the focus is correct. If not, rinse, repeat. Now, once you've locked in focus, it'd be a good idea to apply a little bit of hot glue or other adhesive to lock the lens in place because it will twist back out of focus quite easily. Boom! Job done. Brand new wide-angle lens just waiting for some flight time. Now, I did hit a couple of small issues with the footage though. As you can see for yourself, there's a fairly obvious purple tint in the new footage. Now, to be fair, this camera wasn't awesome for colour correctness to begin with. It always had a bit of a purple tint, but it seems my new lens either has no infrared filter or a much weaker one than the stock lens had. That is what's causing this purple tint. If I show you the raw footage that I've not tried to correct in my video editor, you'll see a pretty dramatic color shift. Well, more accurately, you're seeing the camera pick up way more infrared light. It's not really a color shift. Normally invisible to our human eyes, but without an appropriate filter, which in almost every camera is on the sensor itself, and in these mini cameras is often left to the lens to have one, infrared light comes in slightly counterintuitively as purple. Trees and other plants photographed in infrared are especially dramatically different. Even my very, very black shirt shows up as quite purple. Now, is this an issue? Well, kind of. I mean, you can't really correct for it completely in post-production, though you can make it look a bit less dramatic. But the quality of this camera means you're never going to be doing anything even close to serious video work with it anyway. It's a toy. It's fun. And while unintended infrared affected shots like this in my proper cameras would send me into apoplectic fury, here, it's actually pretty cool, unique, special. In fact, some people go to great lengths to modify their fancy cameras to deliberately shoot in infrared. I got it by accident. <laughs> now, there are a couple of ways I could further mod this camera drone to hack in an effective filter to fix this, and the camera nerds out there who are at least as clever as me will already be thinking of them, but I'm not going to bother. Like I said, I kind of like it, and it is just a toy. 
The other issue I hit with this new lens is lens distortion. Now, ultra-wide angle lenses have lots of barrel distortion just thanks to the, the physics of what they do. Some much fancier lenses optically correct for this to some extent, and many digital cameras will correct for the distortion internally. But this camera has its brains set to correct for the longer lens it's supposed to have. So it's automatically applying those corrections for what it's seeing through this lens. And that makes things look a bit goofy. Because in addition to the barrel distortion, natural to the lens, the now incorrect lens corrections make other parts of this image bow the other way, giving quite a, well, it's a kooky effect, isn't it? Oh, just as a side note, by the way, that slight blurriness you're seeing in the bottom left corner, that's not the lens or a fingerprint or anything. That's the edge of some box tape I used to temporarily hold the lens in focused position until I was sure it was properly focused before fixing it in place more securely. And as you can see, I'm not quite perfectly in focus, so good thing I taped it before gluing it, eh? Now, there's no way to turn this lens correction processing off and no way to tell the camera that it has a different new lens now, at least not without somehow reflashing the firmware or something. So again, it's just kind of a deal with it situation. And once more, it's not like you were ever going to use footage from this guy for anything serious or vital, so who really cares? So, am I happy with my mod? Yep. The slightly heavier lens and the fact that it now protrudes forward from the body hasn't affected the wonderfully fun flight characteristics or flight time in any noticeable way, so I've not ruined this fun little fly quad, that's a plus. And the new wide angle lens has made the footage much more watchable. The wider angle makes the twitchiness of the drone tilting and turning through the air much less exaggerated as it was with the stock lens. The video seems smoother, easy to watch, has a more interesting perspective too. And with the lens this wide, I don't have to worry so much about if an object in front is actually completely in frame or not. And a super wide lens makes flying past and indeed through obstacles look much more dramatic and cool. So I'm happy with that too. And hey, it's a completely reversible mod. If I decide to go back, it's a super simple job to just pop the old lens back in, in the exact same way as I put the new lens on. So, fun little experiment that costs next to nothing. I'm calling it a win. Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.